بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الله معلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا Today we're taking in Zad al-Mustaqnih the author al-Hajjawi may Allah have mercy upon him he writes the chapter Bab Shurut al-Salat the chapter now pertaining to the conditions of the prayer something very important conditions Shurut the plural of Shart so a condition linguistically means like a sign فَهَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا سَاءَةَ أَنْ تَأْتِيَهُمْ بَغْتَ فَقَدْ جَاءَ أَشْرَاطُهَا in Surah Muhammad are they waiting are they looking for the signs verily they will come to them or have come to them uh, already are they waiting for the day of judgment the signs have already come the verse says in Surah Muhammad so linguistically شرط means like a sign right the technical definition المعنى اصطلاح اصطلاحيا is ما يلزم من عدمه العدم ولا يلزم من وجوده الوجود ولا عدم لذاته I say it again ما يلزم من عدمه العدم that which necessitates from the absence of this condition that the action will be absent ولا يلزم من وجوده الوجود ولا عدم لذاته but it doesn't necessitate that if you have the condition that the action would therefore be present, nor absent. So let's give an example to explain that. So wudu is a condition, a shart of the salah, right? So the first part of the definition, I said ما يلزم من عدمه العدم That which necessitates, if the condition is not present, then the action cannot be present. So if somebody doesn't have wudu, which is the condition, then the action of salah cannot be present, right? But if now somebody has wudu, وَلَا يَلْزِمُ مِنْ وُجُودِهِ الْوُجُودِ وَلَا عَدْم It doesn't necessitate just because the person has wudu that they're going to go ahead and pray, right? They may pray, they may not pray. So that's the definition of condition technically. So you have in the salah, you have something which is known as a shart and you have something which is a rukun. <coughs> Excuse me. You have shart, condition and you have rukun which is a pillar and for the salah to be valid both of them have to be there right but what are the differences between the shart the condition and the rukun there are some clear differences the first of them is that the shart the condition is before the prayer it's before the prayer whereas the rukun the pillars are in the prayer right that's the first difference the second difference is that the condition, as we said, it has to be before the action, before the prayer, but it has to be all the way through the action. Like the niyyah, you have to have it all the way through the action. The wudu, you have to have it all the way through the salah. Whereas the ruk and the pillar, it changes. From ruku to sujood to the tashahud, other things, right? It changes every so often. So these are some of the differences that the ulama mentioned. The author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he says, وَقَوْلُهُ شُرُوطُهَا قَبْلَهَا He said, and its conditions are before it. So the conditions have to be before the salah, right? As we said. Except for one. One of them is not exactly before the salah. Which one do you think? Of the conditions of the prayer. The niyyah, the intention. The intention should be closer to the salah, like the takbir. Before you make the takbir at al-hiram, that is the, at the point where you have to ensure that you have the intention. But everything else is clearly outside before the act of worship. So the niyyah is still outside of the act of worship, but it's much closer. It's closer to the takbir at al-hiram, right? So he says, uh, it should be before the action, the shurut. And what you're going to notice here, that the author, he mentions a range of Shurut, right? A range of conditions he's going to mention in this chapter or this part of the chapter. But there's some conditions that he doesn't mention, like Islam, Aql, and Tamiz. Islam, we know. Aql, to have intelligence, that your uh, mental faculties are with you. And Tamiz, that you uh, have reached the age of uh, puberty, let's say, right? These, the author doesn't mention. Why? 
Ahsant, very good, because this is a mukhtasar in fiqh, like we said, it's a summary in fiqh. And a summary of fiqh doesn't repeat uh, things which have already been mentioned, right? So for every act of worship, Islam and aql and tamiz have to be there. And also another reason, some of the ulama, they said, because these are connected with niyyah. These three are connected with the uh, validity of niyyah, that you have to have Islam, aql and tamiz, as mentioned by Sheikh Abdul Salam al-Shawair in his explanation. The author, he says, وَمِنْهَا الْوَقْتِ From the conditions is time. Because Allah says in Surah Nisa, إِنَّ صَلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا Verily the prayer is obligatory upon the believers at specific fixed times, right? So time is extremely important. Salatul Jum'ah, not time is extremely important, time is a condition for the prayer, that the entering of the time of the Salah. Okay, neither is the salah uh, obligatory upon you, neither is it valid until the time enters for that particular salah. Salatul Jummah is different to the other prayers with regards to time. How? So Salatul Jummah, every salah you have to pray in its time, yeah? Except for Salatul Jummah. No. That, that will confuse you. Salatul Jummah is different in the sense that every prayer, if the time is missed, it can be made up with qada, but not Salatul Jummah. Salatul Jummah, if it's missed, it's not made up, right? You end up praying dhuhr instead. Whereas all the other salawat, if there's a valid reason for you missing it, you can make it up with Salatul Qadha, okay? What's Salatul Qadha in English? Just a make up prayer, right? You make it up. The author, he says, وَطَحَارَةُ مِنَ الْحَدِثِ and also purification, purity from hadith, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ida qumtum ila salati, faghsilu wajuhakum wa idiyakum ila al-marafiqi, wa msahu bi ra'usikum wa arjulakum ila al-ka'bain. Oh, you who believe when you stand to the prayer, then wash the parts of the body, which are mentioned in the verse, required for wudu, right? So this is purification from hadith. Who can remind me what is hadith? Define for me what is hadith. As we took many a time in Kitab al Tahara. Hadith, you're going to try? Very good, that's the meaning of it. But the, de the definition is Wasful ma'na wiyun yaqumu fil badan yamna umin as salah wa nahwiha mimma yastaritu lahu al Tahara. We took this so many times. It's an intangible state of impurity, right? It's not tangible, you can't see. It's an intangible state of purity, impurity, which is found on the body. It prevents you from praying and acts of worship which are like that, that need purification, that need you to make wudu or need you to make ghusl, right? So this is hadith. So the author, he's mentioned to us now that tahara from hadith, that purification from this state of hadith, yani you have to make wudu or you have to make ghusl. Right? It's also a condition for the prayer. And then he says, one najis. And he says also, removing impurity, staying away from impurity is a condition for the prayer. It's a must. Right? This refers to two points, to two categories. You have to avoid najasa in your thobe, in your clothing. Okay? In Ahmad, collected by Ahmad and Abi Dawood, once the Prophet وسلم, he was praying, and he took off his shoes. The companions, radiallahu anhum, they also took off their shoes in the salah after seeing the Prophet وسلم, doing it. Then the Prophet وسلم, after the salah, he said to them, "Ma hamalakum ala alqai ni alikum." "Qalu ya Rasulullah, ra'inaka alqaita ni alika, fa alqaina ni alana." He said, "What made you take off your shoes?" They said, "Ya Rasulullah, we saw you take off your shoes, so we took off our shoes." Look how they used to follow the Prophet وسلم, No questions asked. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, "Inna Jibril atani faakhbarni anna fihi ma qadr." Jibril alayhi salam came to me and told me that in my shoes there was some impurity, there was some filth. That's why I took off my shoes, right? So this shows us that we have to avoid, from one of the evidences, that we have to avoid impurities in our clothing, and also the avoidance of impurity pertains to taharat al buqa wal makan, avoiding the impurity of place. Taharatul Buqa wal Makan. Why? Because in Bukhari, in the hadith, Jaa'a Arabiyun Fabala fil Masjid. 
فقاموا الناس إليه ليقعوا فيه فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم دعوه وأريقوا على بوله سجلا من ماء أو ذنوبا من ماء فإنما بعثتم ميسرين ولم تبعثوا معسرين صلى الله عليه وسلم Once a Bedouin came to the masjid, as you know, and he urinated in the masjid. The people gathered around him to beat him up. They were going to beat him up. The Prophet ﷺ said, leave him alone. Rather, when he finishes, get an amount of water, like a bucket of water, and throw it upon where he urinated. For verily, you have been sent to make things easy and not to make things difficult. Right? But what's the point in the hadith? The point in the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ ordered that it be washed. So the purity of place has to be there. Najasa should be washed from your clothing. It should be washed from the place also. What was the first condition the, the Sheikh he said to us? Imam Hajjawi. Huh? Waqt, right? Time. And then he wanted to speak in about Hadith and Najasa. So why did he start with time? And then he mentioned these condi two conditions. And now he's coming back to time in great detail. Why did he do that? Why didn't he just put all time together? What could be one of the reasons? One of the reasons the scholars mention is that they say that waqt is the most important of the conditions. If it opposes or clashes with the other conditions which are going to be mentioned and which have been mentioned, then the waqt will always take precedence. Like we mentioned previously, that if you're in a situation, for example, where you don't have the ability to find clothing, which is satr al awraq covering your awra is one of the conditions of the prayer. And the time is about to run out, then what should you do? Should you delay your prayer and cover your awra, or should you pray in the time without covering your awra? We said always that you take the condition of time first. That takes precedence. So this is one of the reasons why the author, he wrote the points like this. He started with the time, then brought two other conditions, and now he's gone back to time again, okay? So this was mentioned by Sheikh Abdul Salam al-Shawair. فَوَقْتُ الظُّهْرِ مِنْ زَوَالِ إِلَى مُسَاوَةِ شَيْءِ فَيْأَهُ بَعْدَ فَيْءِ زَوَالِ The time for dhuhr is after zawal al-shams. What is zawal al-shams? You've heard this term many a time. So the sun is overhead in the middle of the sky and then it starts to move to its direction towards the east, right? It starts to move, is that correct? Towards the west? Towards the west. It starts to move towards the west. So this is the time of Zawal. And it ends when the shadow of an object is the same length as that object after the shadow of the Zawal. I'll explain this in a minute. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَقْتُ صُلَاةِ الظُّهْرِ إِذَا زَالَتَ الشَّمْسِ وَكَانَ ظِلُّ الرَّجَلِ كَطُولِهِ مَا لَمْ يَحْضُرُ الْعَصْرِ That the time for dhuhr is when the zawal starts, right? And the end time of the dhuhr will be when his shadow, the shadow of a man, is the same size as him, okay? Until asr comes in completely. So he mentioned here something called fay al zawal so the shadow of an object before, before the sun reaches the midpoint in the sky will start to decrease. And then it will stop decreasing at a certain point for maybe roughly 10 minutes or so. But there will be some shadow of that object left. So you have to include that in your calculation, right? So now he said that the end time for Dhuhr is what? When the shadow of an object reaches its same length but including that shadow which was there in the beginning. Okay, so the shadow, as the sun is rising, the shadow starts, of an object starts to decrease and it will stop at a particular point for about 10 minutes. That shadow is known as Fayt al zawal So Fayt al zawal is also included in the next calculations of the shadows, right? So he said the end time of Dhuhr is when the shadow of an object reaches the same length of that object, including the Fayt of zawal why did this author, may Allah have mercy upon him, start with speaking about the time of Dhuhr? Is Dhuhr the first Salah that we pray? It's not, right? So why did he start with Dhuhr? What's the reason here? It's the first prayer that Jibreel alayhi salam prayed with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, right? When it came to the ta'aleem of the Salah and the times of the Salah. 
That's why the scholars, they follow this maslak. They follow this way. وَتَعْجِيلُهَا أَفْضَلُ إِلَّا فِي شِدَّةِ حَرٍ وَلَوْ صَلَّ وَحْدَهُ And to pray it in its earlier time, dhuhr, is better. Okay? Even, except for in extreme heat. So to pray it in its early time is better, even if the person is going to pray by himself, the author is saying, his opinion. And if there is extreme heat, then that's when you do not pray it in its early time. Okay? So recommended is to pray dhuhr earlier and you delay it if there's heat because in Bukhari in Muslim the Prophet ﷺ said إِذَا اشْتَدَّ الْحَرْ فَأَبْرِدُ عَنِ الصَّلَاةِ فَإِنَّ شِدَّةَ الْحَرْ مِنْ فَيْحِ جَهَنَّمْ The Prophet ﷺ said when it's extremely hot then delay the prayer until it cools down for verily the heat is from the ex exhaling of Jahannam of the hellfire may Allah protect us from that right? And this Ibrad mentioned in the hadith, this delaying the prayer until it cools down, as mentioned by Shaykh Abdul Salam Shawair, is around in the summer, an hour after Dhuhr. Okay, it's about up till an hour after Dhuhr and not too much longer after that. So the author is saying that you, play it, you pray it in its early time, Dhuhr. It's recommended to pray in early time, but if it's extremely hot, then you delay it, right? If it's extremely hot. And he also says, أَوْ مَعَ غَيْمٍ لِمَنْ يُصَلِّ جَمَعَةً you also delay the prayer if it's a very cloudy day, if you are praying in Jama'ah. Right? That's another reason for delaying. The, when I say delay the prayer, it's not delaying it beyond its time. It's just making it in the later time as much as possible, right? So he says delay it if it's a cloudy day and you are praying in congregation. Why do you think you would do that? What is the ta'lil? Ta'lil meaning what is the reasoning behind this possibly? Sent Barakallahu Feek, that's one of the reasons. No visibility of the sun, so you have to ensure that the time of Dhuhr has come in. That's one of the reasons the scholars give. What else? Generally, when it's a cloudy day, it kind of indicates there's going to be some bad weather, strong winds, storms, etc., right? So the ulama, they don't want you to come out twice for Salat al Jama'ah, because the good people, the good men, they pray in the masjid. So for you to come out twice in that type of weather is very difficult for you. So they say, delay dhuhr as much as possible, close to asr. Pray that jama'ah, then you will wait in the masjid. When asr time comes in, then you will pray asr. That's how you will join the salawat, right? To avoid having to go home in the strong winds and rain, and then to come back again, okay? And another riwayah of Imam Ahmad, another narration of Imam Ahmad, and held by Ibn Qudama, is that you pray as normal. But our author, al Hajjawi said, you delay if you see it to be extremely cloudy, as their brother mentioned, to ensure that the time has come, for sure, and to make it easy upon the community. What does he say next, the author? He says, وَيَلِيهِ وَقْتُ الْعَصْرِ إِلَى مَصِيدِ الْفَيْءِ مِثْلَيْهِ بَعْدُ فَيْءِ الزَّوَالِ Following on from Dhuhr is the time of Asr, right? And this time of Asr will continue after Dhuhr until the shadow of an object is twice its length. But you have to also include the fate of the zawal. Remember that type of shadow that was left? You have to include that also. And then he says, ila And the necessity time for praying asr is until the sun sets. Okay? So you have a waqtul ikhtiyar, the chosen time, the preferred time. Hold the question, inshallah. Khair. Write it and we'll answer it, inshallah. The preferred time, the waqtul ikhtiyar for asr, okay, is before, before what? Before the shadow reaches twice its length, okay? And the allowed time for somebody who has an emergency or a must, a durura, is until the sun sets for maghrib, right? So waqtul ikhtiyar is until when a shadow reaches twice its length. Waqtul ikhtiyar, until the shadow reaches its twice its length. So from the time of dhuhr finishing, until that time, that's the chosen time for praying Asr. Okay, another opinion in the Madhab, which is often quoted, is what is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet ﷺ said, Waqtul Asri ma lam tasfarra shams. That Salatul Asr is as long as the sun doesn't become weakened and, and yellowish. A kind of weak yellow. Okay, the sun becomes weakened and it has like a weak yellow color. So this is another way, as mentioned by the Hadith, 
in telling that the time of Asr is coming to its end. And we said Asr has a waqt al durura. What is the waqt al durura? The necessity time. Like if there's somebody cannot, uh, doctors, etc., they cannot pray in that time. They're operating maybe, they, or somebody's doing something of importance, or somebody's trying to fulfill a condition of the prayer, and he can't do it in the early time, the waqt al ikhtiyar. This is the waqt al durura. When did I say it's up till? Up to sunset, right? Because the Prophet ﷺ said in Bukhari Muslim, "Man adraka rak'atin rak'atan min al asri qabla an taghrib al shams, faqad adraka al asr." In Bukhari Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Whoever catches a rak'ah from asr before the sun has set, then he has caught the asr prayer." So if you're able to pray one rak'ah, one unit of prayer before maghrib comes upon you, then you have caught the prayer. But as the ulama explained, this is for those who are in a position or in a state of necessity that they had to delay the prayer to this time. But if you delay it to this time, to the end time of Asr, after the shadow of a thing has become twice, then you are sinful. If you delay it there without cause or reason, you are sinful. You are only allowed to delay it to the durura if you had a real reason okay, to do so. So this will be for the, uh, they say, the Ahlul uh, the people of excuse like for example somebody who's menstruating and she only became pure now before Maghrib comes like 20 minutes 15 minutes so that's her time where she has to pray or somebody woke up due to from a sleep that they didn't intend to sleep so long and they've woken up now they've got 20 minutes left till Maghrib they can pray Asr and there's no sin upon them okay and people of that nature and also to mention an extra point uh, Sheikh Abdul Salam Shawayir in his explanation of the book he said that to delay the prayer Asr to that waqt of durura time If you want to catch a jama'ah, a congregation And you know that for whatever reason the congregation is going to be delayed Then it's better for you to delay and catch the congregation Even though you're going to fall into that waqt of durura Not the waqt al-ikhtiyar Not the chosen time, right? And it's recommended to pray the Asr early It's recommended to pray the Asr early whether you still feel hot or you don't feel hot, it's recommended to pray early. The author he says, وَيَلِهِ وَقْتُ الْمَغْرِبِ إِلَى مَغِيبِ الْحُمْرَى Following the Asr prayer is the time of Maghrib. Is the time of Maghrib, okay? إِلَى مَغِيبِ الْحُمْرَى In Sahih al-Jami' of Shaykh al-Albani rahim Allah ta'ala, he quoted the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَقْتُ الْمَغْرِبِ مَا لَمْ يَغِبْ الشفق. The time of Maghrib will continue as long as the Shafiq doesn't disappear or until the Shafiq disappears. The Shafiq Al-Ahmar is that redness that you will find on the horizon. When this disappears, then the waqt of Maghrib has finished, right? So he says waqt al-Maghrib until what? Shafiq Al-Ahmar has disappeared, right? And also for the time of Maghrib to come in, I forgot to mention that when you're looking at the horizon and you're seeing the sun go down, when do you know that Maghrib time has come in? Is it when half of the sun's disk has disappeared? Or is it full? It's full, right? Fully the sun's disk has to disappear from the horizon and that's when the time of Maghrib will come in. So Maghrib will continue into the Shafiq al-Ahmar the redness in the horizon is completely disappeared, right? Any light in the horizon is disappeared. And it's recommended to pray it quickly. And this is the opinion of the four madhahib, the four schools of thought. It's recommended to pray quickly. Except for the night of jama', which means the night where you are going to pray in Muzdalifah, if you're on Hajj, okay? for the one who is in a state of ihram. So in this situation, when you are traveling back from Arafah to Muzdalifah, and the time of Maghrib comes upon you, it's recommended that you delay your prayer of Maghrib until you get to Muzdalifah. This is what he meant by delaying the Maghrib prayer in that situation. Otherwise, you always pray it early as possible. Then he said, وَيَلِيهِ وَقْتُ إِلَى فَجْرِ الثَّانِي Following the Maghrib prayer, when the Shafiq al-Ahmar when the redness disappears from the horizon, comes the time of Isha. That's the time of Isha. And this Isha time will extend until the second Fajr. 
So the Prophet said in Sahih Muslim, Sahih Muslim, Amma innahu laysa fi nawmi tafrit, innama tafritu fi man lam yusalli salah hatta yaji waqtu salat al-ukhra. The Prophet said, there is no negligence in sleep. And here he means not the one who sleeps on purpose, right, when it's prayer time. There's no negligence in sleep. Very, verily negligence is for the one who delays a prayer until the time of the other prayer comes, right? So from this hadith, the, ul the ulama, they say that the times of the prayer, they're connected one to the other. So as soon as Maghrib finishes, Isha comes in. As soon as Isha finishes, Fajr comes in. So the point here, the author, is, he said that the Isha time is until the second Fajr. Where did he get that from? One of the evidences from the hadith. Because when Isha time finishes, is when the next prayer comes in. The next prayer is Fajr. So you can pray Isha if there's an excuse, a darura, a necessity, until Fajr comes in, right? As the ulama have told us. And he said, وَهُوَ بَيَادُ mu'tarid." This Fajr time, Fajr Thani, is when the light goes across the horizon. Fajr, you have two times, you have two Fajrs. You have what is known as Fajr Al-Kadhib, the lying Fajr, or the false Fajr, and Fajr Sadiq, and the true Fajr, the truthful Fajr. Fajr Al-Kadhib is when you will see light on the horizon, but not horizontally, it's vertically, right? It goes up. And between the horizon and this light, there is darkness. Between the horizon and this light, there is darkness going up vertically. And then that light will disappear and it will return back to being dark. So this is known as Fajr al-Kadhib. So somebody in the desert, he might see the light and say, oh wow, it's time for Salat al-Fajr. No, you have to wait to see what will happen with that light. If that light disappears, then this was Fajr al-Kadhib. And it's going upwards, right? Fajr al-Sadiq is the one which comes after it. The light is going across the horizon. This is Fajr al-Sadiq. And this is the one where you pray. And to delay the Salatul Aisha until the third of the night has passed is better if it's easy for the people, if it's not difficult for the people. Imam Ahmad, uh, Imam Ibn Majah and Tirmidhi, they collect the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where he said, Lawla an ashukka ala ummati, la amartuhum an yuakhirul isha ila thulathil layli aw nisfahu. Had it not been difficult for my Ummah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I would have commanded them to delay the prayer, Isha prayer, until a third of the night had passed or until half of the night had passed. Right? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi would love to delay the Isha prayer if it wouldn't be difficult for the people. So this is the waqtul ikhtiyar. The chosen time for Isha after Maghrib is to delay it until a third of the night has gone if it's not difficult. And the waqtul darura, the waqt of necessity, for those people who have excuse is to pray until the time of Fajr comes upon you, right? But again, if you do that without excuse, you're sinful. Allah protect us. Then the author, he says, وَقَوْلُهُ وَيَلِيهِ وَقْتُ الْفَجْرِ إِلَى طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ Following on from that time of Isha is the time of Salatul Fajr until the sun rises. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَقْتُ الصَّلَاةُ الصُّبْحِ مِنْ طُلُوعِ الْفَجْرِ مَا لَمْ يَطْلُعِ الشَّمْسِ That the time for Fajr is when the dawn comes upon you. The time for the morning prayer is when the Fajr, the dawn comes upon you as long as the sun hasn't risen up to the time of sunrise, right? وَتَعْجِيلُهَا أَفْضَلُ The Prophet ﷺ, the author, Rahimullah Ta'ala, Imam Hajjawi, is telling us that to pray Fajr in the earlier time is better. تَعْجِيلُهَا Bukhari Muslim Aisha radiyallahu anha Ummu al-Mu'mineen She said Kunna nisa al-Mu'minat Yashhadna ma'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Salatul Fajr She said Verily the believing women Used to Pray Salatul Fajr With the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Mutalafi'at bimarrutihinna And they would be Fully covered with heavy clothing With heavy wraps لَا يَعْرِفُهُنَّ ثُمَّ يَنْقَلِبْنَا إِلَى بُيُوتِهِنَّ هِنَ يَقْدِينَ الصَّلَاةِ And then they will return to their homes once the salah was finished. لَا يَعْرِفُهُنَّ أَحَدٌ مِّنَ الْغَلَسِ Nobody will be able to know them because of the ghalas. What is this word ghalas? The ulama that explained that ghalas is the mixing of the darkness and the light. So ghalas is that 
Fajr time, you will see light in the horizon, in the sky, but on the earth it's still dark. Okay, this is, this is the ghalas. So there's light and at the same time it's dark. So the light is kind of descending to the earth. This is the time of ghalas. And this is why this hadith proves that it's better to pray it in the early time. Why? Because the hadith mentioned that the believing women used to pray with the Prophet ﷺ and when they would return home after the prayer, which the Prophet ﷺ prayed fairly long, there would still be ghalas, meaning that the light would be up there in the horizons, but on the earth it was to be quite dark. So this is a proof that it should be prayed in the early time, not in the later time, as many have said. وَتُدْرَكُوا أَصَلَاتُ بِتَكْبِيرَةِ الْإِحْرَامِ فِي وَقْتِهَا and the salah is gotten, you've managed to get the salah if you manage to say Allahu Akbar before the time finishes. Again, this is for the one who didn't intend to delay it. If you intend to delay it, you're sinful. But still, if you did takbirat al-hiram before the time of the prayer leaves, then you get what? You have caught the salah, right? You prayed the salah and you don't need to make it up. But it should never ever be delayed to that situation. Bukhari Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا أَدْرَكَ أَحَدُكُمْ سَجْدَةً مِنْ صَلَاةِ الْأَصْرِ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَغْرُبُ الشَّمْسِ فَلْيُتِمَّ صَلَاتَهُ وَإِذَا أَدْرَكَ سَجْدَةً مِنْ صَلَاةِ الصُّبْحِ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَطْلَعُ الشَّمْسِ فَلْيُتِمَّ صَلَاتَهُ The Prophet ﷺ said, any one of you who managed to get a sajda before of Salat al-Asr before the sun goes down, then let him continue with his prayer, meaning finish his prayer. You got the salah. And also in the morning prayer, if you manage to get a sajda before the sun has risen, then continue with your prayer. You manage to get the prayer. So what's the wajhu dalala here? Wajhu dalala means what is the point of evidence from this hadith for the point that the author mentioned. Sheikh Abdul Salam al-Shawair, he said, any part of the salah that you get before the taslim, before the time has gone, sorry, then it's considered that you got the prayer because the salah is one unit. And also the hadith is alluding to the arkan, to the rukuns, to the pillars of the salah because the sajda is a pillar. And what is the first pillar that you make in the salah? Takbirat al-ihram. Therefore, if you get the first pillar, which is takbirat al-ihram, in the time of the salah before it's finished, then you have caught the salah. This is how they explain this evidence pertaining to the point that the imam said. So we're saying that for a person to think, did I catch the salah, did I not catch the salah? As long as he got the takbirat al-ihram before the time had finished, then he's considered as having got the salah, he should continue his salah, he doesn't need to repeat, but he makes tawbah for delaying without having an excuse. Now this mas'ala is different to the mas'ala of does one catch the salat al jamaa Does one catch the virtue of the congregation salah? This is a different discussion. Because many of the ulama said you don't catch the congregation salah unless you caught the imam before finishing the ruku. If you didn't catch that, then you haven't caught the congregation, right? If he's, if he's in his last ruku. That's a different discussion. Tayyib, what does the author say next? وَلَا يُصَلِّ قَبْلَ غَلَبْتِ ظَنِّهِ بِالدَّخُولِ وَقْتِهَا وَلَا يُصَلِّ قَبْلَ غَلَبَتِ ظَنِّهِ بِالدَّخُولِ وَقْتِهَا And the person cannot pray and should not pray until he, ha- he is sure to the best of his ability, sure to the best of his ability that the time has come upon him. Tayyib, how is the time for salah known? Sheikh Abdul Salam al-Shawayir, he mentions four points. They're really two, but he breaks them into four. He says the first of them is that the person sees the sun's position by himself, ru'ya. If he doesn't see the sun, the second way of knowing the salah is that he has khabar, min al-thiqa. He's told by a reliable person about the ru'ya. So he's told about the position of the sun. The third of them, way to know, is knowing through calculations of the positions of the sun or the positions of the moon. This is other ways that salah timing is known. If the person doesn't know how to do that, the fourth way is that he's told by somebody who is trustworthy, who has that knowledge and who is trustworthy. So these four ways is where the salah time is known. So the author, he said, you cannot pray unless you know to the best of your ability that the time has come upon you. Now he's going to explain how this is known. Imma bi ishtihad. Either by making ishtihad, you have the knowledge, you have the ability to determine when the prayer times are, so you have to use that knowledge and that ability. Aw khabarin, aw khabari thiqatin mutayaqin. Or you can base your uh, ruling 
upon the information that somebody of knowledge and trustworthiness gives to you. So either you have it yourself or somebody of trustworthiness and knowledge gives you the knowledge or informs you that now the time of prayer has come in. So this is how you can ensure that the time of prayer has come. فَإِنْ أَحْرَمَا بِإِجْتِهَادٍ فَبَانَ قَبْلَهُ فَنَفْلٌ وَإِلَّا فَرْضٌ So if the person, he makes ijtihad, he strives to the best of his ability with his knowledge, right? To determine the time of prayer. So he goes ahead and prays, but then he finds out later on that actually, I prayed before the time. I prayed before the time. So then his prayer that he prayed will be converted to a nafl. Okay, and then he will have to go ahead and pray that prayer again. So somebody prayed after making ijtihad, right? He tried his best. But then he found out, actually, I prayed early. So that early salah that he prayed is a nafl in his bank of good deeds. But the fard prayer, he still has to go ahead and pray. Because the rule in fiqh is, لا إبرة بالظن البين خطأه لا إبرة بالظن البين خطأه There is no consideration of dhan, and dhan is that it's not certainty, but it's the best of your ability in knowledge, but then later comes out to be uh, incorrect, so there's no consideration of that in the rulings, that has to be ignored. Okay? Sheikh Mutlaq Jasud, in his explanation of this book, he mentions an interesting mas'ala, he says, look, if somebody went ahead and prayed, but he didn't bother to check the times, in the sense of using his knowledge to check the times, nor did he go and ask somebody of trustworthiness, it has the time come in. He went and prayed a certain prayer, but he was correct in his prayer. It was the right time. His salah is still not going to be accepted from him. Did you get the mas'ala? So a person has prayed a certain prayer. He didn't go ahead and check using his knowledge if the time had come in, nor did he go ahead and ask somebody who had the knowledge, did the time come in, he just went ahead and prayed, but then his prayer happened to be in the correct time. They say, here the prayer is not valid. Does anybody know why that could be? <coughs> because he didn't do those two conditions of establishing the prayer time. He didn't make the ijtihad, nor did he take a khabar from a thiqa, nor did he take the narration or the, um, the information from somebody who's trustworthy. So they say, based upon this, Islam is not valid. It's like the one who, d who went ahead and prayed in the direction. He didn't determine which way the Qibla is, nor did he bother to ask somebody, where is the Qibla? He just prayed. They said, this person also, his salah won't be valid because he didn't make those, uh, that effort. طيب. The Imam says, وَإِنْ أَدْرَكَ مُكَلَّفٌ مِنْ وَقْتِهَا قَدْرَ تَحْرِيمًا This one needs a bit of concentration. He said, if the person... The mukallaf, the mukallaf is the one who obligations have to be fulfilled. Yani somebody he has his intellect, somebody has reached the stage of, stage of balug, he has health with him. This is mukallaf, right? Somebody who, has, who is able to perform the obligations. This person, uh, if this person reaches the time of the prayer, the amount of the tahrima, uh, the takbirat uh, al-ihram, if he reaches the, uh, the time for a particular prayer with that amount where he can make the takbirat al-ihram, right? But then his taklif, his ability to do that act of worship is taken away from him, right? So a person, he's able to do that act of worship because he's mukallaf. So he reaches the prayer time with at least the takbirat al-ihram left, meaning he, there's enough time for him to make takbirat al-ihram. But then his taklif is taken away from him. Maybe he becomes unconscious, for example. So his taklif is taken away from him. His ability to do the prayer is taken away from him. Or a woman, she started to menstruate in that time. Before she was able to make the takbirat al-ihram, she started to menstruate. Later on, this person, his taklif comes back to him. He regains his consciousness. Or the woman who had menstruation, her menstruation goes, but this is outside of the time. The time finished. The taklif came back to them once the time had finished. They have to make that salah up. Why? Because they were able to get the takbirat al-ihram in that time. They were a person of taklif. They were a person who could have done the act of worship in that time, right? 
So they were in the state of taklif when there was still time for them to have made the takbirat al-ihram. But then something happened which prevented them. So by virtue of the fact that they had that ability for that time, that short time, and then they return to having the ability once the time of the prayer is finished, that means simply that they have to go ahead and make that prayer up. Okay? So the common one is for the, hari, the menstruating woman. She starts to menstruate when there's, uh, she had time left to make taqbirat al-ihram. In that prayer, she started to menstruate. So we say to her, whenever you come back to purity, that salah that you had time to make taqbirat al-ihram in, you have to make it up. Okay? And then he says, وَمَنْ صَارَ أَهْلًا لِوَجُوبِهَا قَبْلَ خُرُوجِ وَقْتِهَا لَزِمَتْهُ And a person who becomes mukallaf, or a person who becomes somebody who can do the obligation before the time has left, then he has to do that prayer. What is this? This is different to the first scenario in the sense that the person, he didn't have taklif in the time of the prayer. Okay? His taklif came at the end of the time of the prayer. Tayyib? So somebody, for example, was ha'id, she was menstruating through asr. From the beginning of Asr to five minutes before the end of Asr. Five minutes at the end of Asr, she could have made the takbirat al-ihram. But she has to go ahead and wash, change her clothes, etc. So she couldn't do it. But that prayer now, because she became mukallaf, because she became a person of worship in that time, because she had enough time for takbirat al-ihram before it finished, then she has to make up that prayer. Tayyib. The author, he says, وَمَا يُجْمَعُوا إِلَيْهَ قَبْلَهَا and also the person in these situations where they can make the two situations that I mentioned where they were able or they, they were mukallaf in time before it passed they also have to make the other prayer up to it which could have been joined with it this is fatwa of many of the sahaba radiallahu anhum they said for example if a woman becomes pure okay in the time of asr so she has five minutes left before Asr is going to finish. She's not going to pray Asr because she has to make ghusl. She has to change her clothes, right? So what's the situation for her? She has to pray Maghrib. She has to make the Asr up. Why? Because she finished her, ha- her Hayd before the time of Asr had finished. That's when she became Mukallif. And also she has to make up Dhuhr. Why? Because Dhuhr can be joined to Asr. Tayyib, this is the fatwa of many of the companions. Likewise also, if the woman, uh, she became pure just before Fajr, just before Fajr, right? Then she's going to miss her Isha because she hasn't got enough time to get ready for Isha. So she prays the Fajr, then she has to pray the Isha, and she has to pray the Maghrib with the Isha because Maghrib and Isha can be joined. وَيَجِبُ فَوْرًا قَضَاءُ الفوائد. And the making up of the praise that you have missed have to be made up quickly, as soon as you are able to do so. The Prophet said in Bukhari and Muslim, مَن نَسْيَ صَلَى فَلْيُسَلِّهَا إِذَا ذَكَرَهَا لَا كَفَارَ لَهَا إِلَّا ذَلِكَ Whoever forgets a prayer, then let فَلْيُسَلِّ Then let him make it up as soon as he remembers it. There's no expiation for it except that. Sheikh Abdul Salam al he said the fa here in the hadith, فَلْيُسَلِّهَا is the fa al fawriya meaning that it has to be done quickly. Okay, so the fa in this hadith is saying you better do it, it has to be done as soon as you remember, as soon as you have the ability. You can't delay it. Happened to me today, I woke up after a nap, it was time for Asr, and then I realized, subhanAllah, I don't know how it happened, I didn't pray Isha last night for whatever reason. I was feeling a bit sick. I was, I was saying to myself, I'll pray later. So then as I'm coming down the stairs, Shaitan starts whispering to me, right? Yani eat something first and then make it up. But the hadith say no. As soon as you remember, as soon as you have the ability and you've missed the prayer, you have to make it up. So the fa is for, so for fawriya. Any fawait, any salah that you missed, you have to make them up quickly. And he says, the author, murattiban, that you have to make them up in order. Okay? You have to make them up in order because the rule of fiqh, al-qada, yahki al-ada. The qada has the same rules as the prayer which was done properly in Ada. The made up prayers have to be done like the normal prayer in its timings also. So you have to make them up in order, right? Hold the question if you don't mind. 
Then the author, he says, Rahimullah Ta'ala, وَيَسْقُطُوا أَتَرْتِيبُ بِنِسْيَانِهِ And tartib, doing them in order, is overlooked if the person forgot. As we know, the Prophet Sallallahu said, as narrated by Ibn Majah and Bayhaqi, may Allah have mercy upon them, the Prophet Sallallahu said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى تَجَاوَزَ لِي عَنْ أُمَّتِي الخطأ والإسنان وما استقره عليه. That verily Allah سبحانه وتعالى gifted me for my ummah that whatever they did forgetfully or they did mistakenly, okay, or they were compelled to do, they are overlooked in that sense. So anything you did out of mistake which you shouldn't have done, or you're compelled to do it, or you did out of خطأ والإسنان or mistakenly, then it's overlooked for you. So here the author said that ترتيب Doing, some, doing the present order is overlooked if you forgot. Tayyib. So for example, they say that a person, he prays Asr, he's praying Salat al-Asr, but he forgot to pray Dhuhr, right? So before making the Taslim, he remembers that he didn't do Dhuhr. So his Asr, his Asr is going to be a Nafal for him now, right? Because he should have made the prayers up in order. So he has to go and pray Dhuhr and then make the Asr again because he had a prayer to make up before Asr. But the person who's praying Asr and he had to make up Dhuhr, if he remembers after the Taslim, then his Asr is okay for him. He carries on with that. It's, it's nothing to do here. So the person praying Asr and he has to make up Dhuhr, if he remembers before the Taslim of Asr, then his asr is now converted for him to nafal. So he has to go out of that salah after finishing it, make up the dhuhr and do the asr again. Tayyib. But the asr, if he finishes the taslim, then remembers that there's dhuhr, his asr is fine, he just has to make up the dhuhr. Okay? So this is one of the points that they have pertaining to this. And also tartib, the order of the salah, is overlooked for the following reason. We said it's overlooked due to nisyan, due to forgetfulness, and also بِخَشْيَةِ خُرُوجِ وَقْتِ الْإِخْتِيَارِ الْحَاضِرَةِ And also if, you, if you're fearful that the preferred time, the waqtul ikhtiyar of the prayer time now is going to be lost. So somebody has to make up, somebody has to make up dhuhr, but Salat al-Asr is very close now to coming to the time where it's waqt al where it's the time of necessity only. So the person cannot say, okay, I'm going to pray dhuhr and delay my asr until it goes to the time of darura because now he's fallen into a compound problem. He has two issues, right? He's, going to, he's not going to do the dhuhr in the correct tar- tartib and nor is he going to do asr in its correct time. He's going to delay it to the waqt al-durura. So in this situation, also the tartib is overlooked. He finishes asr and then he goes back and he prays dhuhr. As mentioned by the ulama of the madhab in Muntaha, Al-Iradat and other places. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anything which was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Mistakes and shortcomings from myself and shaitan.